So all of us crave that attention, don't we? That that beautiful warming glow we get when people hit the like button or comment on our posts on social media. But the question is, is that what you're trying to chase in your content production? And does that strategy have any merit? My name is Chris Hargraves. I am from digitalmarketingforlawyers.com and this is the Digital Marketing Mastery Series. If you've tuned in, by now you've heard a little bit about how I think and a little bit about how I approach things. And today we're going to talk about vanity metrics in particular. If you haven't heard this term, a vanity metric is a thing that helps you feel good about yourself, but ultimately offers no fundamental benefit to your business or your practice. What do we include in this? We include things like likes. If I were to go to Instagram and enter the right series of hashtags, even if I had a brand new account, I could attract a lot of likes immediately. No relationship, nothing would happen, I would get no new clients, but I could get a lot of likes. And then I could write a blog post saying how to get more likes on your Instagram feed and show you the combination of hashtags I use to do that to get all those little bot-driven likes that have a tendency to come through. But how is that going to help my business? More importantly, how is that going to help your business? If I were to build up a Pinterest page consisting entirely of inspirational quotes then I am going to be able to attract a lot of attention because people like inspirational quotes. Often the quotes don't even need to be that inspirational or, frankly, that helpful. They just need to be good-seeming, positive, happy. So if I were to do that and then I were to come to you and say, Hello, I'm Chris. I do digital marketing for lawyers. Look at my Pinterest page and how many followers I have and how many likes I have on my stuff. And you go, wow, that's a lot. Um, Chris, how many clients did that get you? If you're asking sensible questions, this is what you ought to be asking. And I would say, oh, no clients, unless you you happen to sign up because I told you about it. Here's the thing. Likes in and of themselves are not bad nor, for that matter, are comments and shares. And often, if we're crafting a piece of content, we are doing it because we want to get that kind of engagement. But what I'm talking about is artificial likes that offer no relationship development. Way back at the start of this series, okay, it's not that far back, it's a little ways back. Back at the start of this series, I spoke about the number one rule of marketing digital or otherwise, the number one rule is that people do business with people that they know, like, and trust. And the problem with inspirational quotes is that while they attract a lot of likes, they are not personable in the sense that no one can tell it's you. You could be substituted out and absolutely nothing would be different. They do not build trust because they do not have any sufficiency of expertise or expression that is going to have people look at that content and go, wow, this person knows what they are on about. I will trust them. They are vulnerable or they are knowledgeable or they are expert or whatever it may be. There is no trust building element. And they're not that likable because there's none of you in it. So while we could work together to craft a strategy that would attract an enormous amount of vanity metrics, it's not going to actually help your business. Why do I mention this? I'm not just mentioning this to be negative. I'm mentioning this to ensure that you're asking the right questions of your content, of your marketing team, of your consultants, which is this. How many clients is this putting us in front of? Because it's actually pretty easy to game the system, to aspire to vanity metrics. And it's easy to think that we're accomplishing something we are not if we look only at those vanity metrics. Now, that said, a piece of content may be genuinely excellent and may attract a lot of engagement and attention as a consequence of that excellence for some reason. 
whatever that measure may be. And so that doesn't mean that the metrics associated with that content are necessarily only vanity metrics. They are a measure of genuine engagement. So we need to be cautious, is my point, looking at the numbers. I could go right now and I could pay to put my Facebook page in front of people who have absolutely no interest in what I do, but who will hit the like button. And I could get a thousand or 10,000 or a hundred thousand likes on my Facebook page in a very short space of time if I threw enough money at it. And none of those people are ever going to call me and ask me to put a proposal together for their digital marketing plan. So do not get caught up in looking at the metrics, the statistics, if the only thing you're looking at are these vanity metrics. Make sure you're looking at what they mean and how they're being obtained and what they're ultimately doing for your business. Sure, you might put something like an inspirational quote into your content mix. We've spoken about that before, but you could easily get caught in the trap of doing that over and over and over and over because you're chasing the vanity. You're not chasing the substance. Always chase the substance because that's where relationships come from. That is all for today. Chase the substance by hitting the subscribe button and uh, doing all those nice and lovely things to ensure that you can continue listening to this content. If you're enjoying it, I would welcome any reviews and comments and questions. If you want me to deal with particular topics, please let me know. Shoot me a message, say hello, and I'll see you next time.